Portland was the first city in the United States to actually adopt a climate action plan uh, 25 years ago, and we're currently implementing the fourth such plan. An 80% reduction of carbon emissions by 2050 is needed in order to avoid catastrophic impacts of climate change. One big piece of the climate plan is to increase bike use. Already, nearly one in every 12 Portlanders commute to work on bike, the highest rate in the nation. Its new goal is to get 25% of commuters on bikes by 2030. In some parts of town already where we have the right infrastructure and the right access, we are already seeing over 20% of households cycling on a daily basis. Getting there by 2030 will take bold action and novel ideas, like dedicated bikeway streets that restrict car traffic. It will also require getting a lot of new people on bikes. Events that we've done, like Sunday Parkways or Breakfast on the Bridges, helps to create a, a support network, an environment in which people feel more comfortable um, trying out something new. And if we're serious about achieving our climate action goals, then we have to focus on active transportation, bicycle transportation in particular. If we support separated bike lanes that make people feel more confident and more safe about biking, they will do it. Behind the city's push is a pantheon of grassroots bike advocacy groups that have grown in influence over the years, forming a bicycle lobby that wields considerable power in city politics. We want them to build it. Safety is highest among their concerns. North Williams Avenue, a direct corridor from North Portland to downtown, has the most bike traffic of any street in the city. During weekday commutes, more than a thousand bikes pass here every hour. Back in 2011, the street was a high priority for improvements in bike infrastructure. But North Williams also runs through the heart of the Albina neighborhood, an African-American district once decimated by urban renewal and still neglected by city services. To many, the coming of bike lanes symbolized the gentrification of their neighborhood. It felt like a slap in the face that this group of cyclists um, could have that kind of power to come in and you know, start to conduct a process focused on cycling as opposed to some of the issues that the community had been asking for um, to be addressed for a long time. I'm a bike commuter and so when I'm out there what I see are a lot of that bike infrastructure is now serving more gentrified communities. Some bike advocates insisted the city stand firm on its plans for North Williams. But others recognized that the resistance was not really about bikes. You need to take the time to understand the context, particularly if you're in a community harmed by past transportation infrastructure. The conversation that feels like it's just about transportation really is about a whole legacy of trust and relationships between government and community members. Cyclists can, can sometimes um, be myopic, but so can many different other advocacy groups. Cyclists are going to advocate for their own safety, and they should. There's a mediation role of those interests, and that's government's job, to be cognizant and reflective and hopefully representative of many more diverse interests around transportation. Some bike advocacy groups have launched efforts to build inclusiveness not just new infrastructure. Who are we valuing in our bicycle um, infrastructure? And who's at the table and who's making those decisions? That involves like white people, that involves black people, that involves people of color, that involves older people, younger people, men, women, non-binary folk. And how do those people want to engage with bicycles or what would get them on bicycles? And so if what we're really focused on is people taking action to reduce their carbon emissions, for climate change, but we haven't equipped them to participate in a system that allows them to not use their car or their truck even to get to work, then we're, we're not serving them. Partly in response to the North Williams controversy, the city has commissioned an equity analysis for its climate action plan, looking at ways that both climate change and the city's efforts to deal with it are impacting vulnerable communities. Moving forward from there, the conversations were so different um, in how people were engaging with one another because they were now thinking about unintended consequences, benefits and burdens. 
it's really important, um, not just what we do, but how we do it in order for us to achieve our long-term emission reductions of 80% by 2050. We can't do that if we leave a third of the city behind.